All right, day 15 of Russia's invasion into Ukraine. And Russian forces seem to be inching closer and closer to the capital, Kyiv, now just three miles out. Reports also of hand-to-hand -hand combat breaking out in the suburbs of Kyiv. Are the Russians, the forces there, losing some steam? Our correspondent on the ground is going to take us inside those battles coming up. All while right here at home, inflation hits the highest level in four decades. Ladies and gentlemen, a whopping 7.9 percent. But according to the Biden administration, of course, your sky-high gas prices, those are Putin's fault. You may have noticed this week that your gas prices have gone up. I want to talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. That's why the president has been so focused on investing in clean energy technologies, so that we can rely on that and not President Putin to set the price of gas. So you know the narrative. There you go. Exactly how much more can you expect to pay at the pump in the next couple months? Can you even stand to know how much more you're going to pay? OK, plus Kamala heading to Poland cackling her way through the pressing problems that the world is facing under her boss's inept leadership. What is so funny now? Well, we're going to answer all those questions for you tonight. But first up, we got to check in with our foreign correspondent. Chuck Holton is live from Kyiv now with the latest developments of these Russian forces. Chuck, good evening. That's right. Uh, you're hearing a lot in the media about the fact that the Battle of Kyiv has begun. Uh, but I would say don't believe it. As a matter of fact, the Russian forces have not moved much, uh, especially around Kiev. They've moved into the suburbs surrounding Kiev, but uh, only yesterday did they actually breach uh, the city limits of Kiev proper, and that was in a, a place called Brovery out in the northeast. And when they got there, they got their heads handed to them by the Ukrainian military. As a matter of fact, they lost an entire regiment of tanks. They say that that entire uh, tank regiment was liquidated. That's a quote from the Ukrainian military, and there's video of that. Uh, and uh, so it was very costly for them. And that's a, a good taste of what's to come when they try to get into Kyiv proper. Because as I've driven around this city over the last week, I've seen the incredible amount of fortifications. And more importantly, I've seen the will of the Ukrainian people who are left here planning to fight for every square inch of this city. Now, the, the refugees that are flocking out of the suburbs uh, ahead of the Russian advance uh, are in their tens and hundreds of thousands at this point. Uh, we went out to Irpin and Bucha yesterday, where they've evacuated over 60,000 people in just 48 hours. And uh, that's a mid shelling, even when the Russians say they wouldn't do it, promise they wouldn't do it. Uh, they were firing on civilians and killing uh, several people yesterday alone. Wow. So that's where we are at this point in Kyiv. You've seen a lot about the bombings in other parts of For sure. uh, Ukraine, in Mariupol especially, that huge bomb that was dropped right. on a children's hospital. Yeah, I guess it's easier that. to bomb children's hospital than it is to go after the military who might shoot down your airplanes. Right. And that, that uh, appears to be the strategy that Vladimir Putin is taking at this point. Well, Chuck Holden, Wendy? I appreciate your comments there from the ground very much. Thank you, sir. I want to get a military perspective now. I'm joined by former Trump 2020 National Security Advisor, retired Army Reserve Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer. Colonel, welcome hey, so much. It's great to see you. You know, sure I, you. I think the takeaway for me and for so much of America is whom to believe, what's going on. The message is, in, it's so complicated, sir. Walk us through today, please. So uh, the siege is being prepared to go into the city. Wendy, it's very clear that Putin uh, had counted on a very quick three-day victory. It didn't happen. Uh, and now they're all playing catch-up. That is the Russians. And who do you believe? Well, you believe your correspondent who's there to witness it. You believe people who are able to essentially post things with some level of time stamp and did a digital uh, location indicator and things like that. Uh, but I would not believe any official sources. I don't believe the Biden administration. I don't believe Putin. I don't believe Zelensky. It's right now a, a, a total wash. So I think people like you, your network, people on the ground are going to have to do their best to sort through this. For sure. The bottom line is, yeah, the bottom line is, 
the Russians were not prepared for the grind that they're now engaged in. But, Wendy, I'll say this and be very clear about it. They will continue to endure the grind. Putin's not going to back down. His political right. will is set. The uh, Ukrainian people's political will is set to defend themselves. They've got the home, the home uh, court advantage. Th that's very apparent. But Putin is only using about a quarter of his army, and he could bring a lot more to bear if he needs to. You know, and I wanted to ask you that. Why, why are we sure. not doing, why, if he's serious about getting the point made, get it done, is it just supposed to be the death by a thousand cuts because it's obviously hurting a lot of people? Is that the point? So uh, his own military has a huge number of, of problems. I, I was going through and reviewing this today. His aviation assets haven't been working well. Mm -hmm. uh, Wendy, we have uh, M1, the M1 Abrams is our primary battle tank. That's what we've used since the 80s. He's got the T-72, the T-80, the T-90, all these other things. Uh, and so you've got layers of complexity regarding just pushing these things forward. He's sending his best units one place, the conscripts and bad uh, older stuff somewhere else. It's a mess. And, and so that tells me that they did not prepare for a long-term uh, concerted effort. Uh, and I'm not saying, like, we're much better. I, I, I think we, we could get our act together pretty quick. That is you know, U.S. and NATO. But uh, Putin clearly was not prepared for it. And, and let's be honest here. He's a corrupt uh, dictator. Uh, he's in a corrupt system. Sure. I suspect a lot of that money they spent on the military probably went into the pockets of their contractors, not on upgrading and maintaining their equipment. So that's apparent right. uh, that they just are not prepared. So there's a lot of lot of uh, bad things happening because of their own uh, uh, system of, no of the way they, they conduct military operations. I've got 30 seconds. Tell me, when sure. do you think? Wh give me the timeline. When do you think this ends? So uh, he's going to do the best he can to have this wrapped up by the end of the month. Uh, this is costing him uh, uh, about $20 billion a day. Wow. Uh, so he, he's not unlimited on wow. resources, but he's, he's got a lot more he can throw into it. So look for the end of the month to be a, have it all wrapped up. Yeah, I really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much, Lieutenant sure. Colonel Thanks, Tony Schaefer. Thank you very much.